Hi everyone, and by popular demand, I am going to create a tutorial here on how to take still images that you've put text over and turn this into a 30 second video to tell a story with the text and the images, add motion to it. We're going to do this all in Adobe Photoshop. So this is an in-class assignment that I've given in my Multimedia Production One class, but I guess it bears a video tutorial and this way you guys can go back and reference it if you need to do something like this. So let's go ahead and open up Photoshop and this is our starting page. So the first thing we want to do here is we're going to go to Window and then go down here and go to Timeline. And when you do that, it's going to open up this little timeline over here. I'm actually going to bring this up for you a little bit so you can see it. And this is where your still images will go in a sequenced timeline. Now the default time for a still image is five seconds. So we, since we want this to be a 30 second type of promo, if we put in six images, so six times five is 30, so that's what we're going to do. So we've gone over in class on putting text in photos. So we save the photos first as a Photoshop document in case we need to make some changes. But then we went ahead and we save it a second time and as a JPEG, which flattens it out. And that's what we want to do over here is bring them all into JPEGs. So I've already gone in and created my six images. So now I want to import them into the timeline here. So if you look right over here, there's a little film strip. We're going to click on it and it says add media. So I'll click on this and then I'm going to go ahead and navigate to where I put that. It's on my desktop. It's in a folder called photos. So I think the easiest thing to do is to name your images slide or photo one, two, three, four, five, and six. And the reason why you would do this is that way you can bring all of your images into the timeline at the same time. You can still bring them in one at a time if you, you know, feel like you need to make some changes and go back. But since I've already done all six images, I'm going to bring them all in one shot. So as you can see, I have here slide one. That's welcome to FIU. Slide two, where it's always fashionable to be a proud panther. Slide three, study hard and get to class on time. Take advantage of our beautiful campuses. Did I mention the part about studying hard? Enjoy your time at FIU and be worlds ahead. Now all these photos are edited exactly the same size, 1920 by 1080, which is what you want for TV. If they're not the same size, then you're going to have some problems when you export the video. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of them and I'll hit open. And once I do that, you see it brought in all the images into the timeline here. Okay, it brought in, and if it brings it in in a different order or something like that, for some reason it brought it in slide six first. So you can just go ahead and grab it and then just bring it in over here. So now they're all in the right order. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's why I was saying before, if you don't bring them all in one shot, then it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so they're all in here. And if I hit the space bar or I can hit play over here, it'll play through the images. You can hit stop or the space bar. But now what I want to do is I want to add motion to all my photos. Um, and whatever motion you want to put into it is fine. You just kind of don't want the same motion in each photo. So let's go to slide one. I'll click on it. Then I'll right click and it says no motion. Let's go back to slide one. There we go. Okay. Click on it. No motion. If I click on this, I have a drop down menu, pan and zoom, pan, zoom, rotate, rotate and zoom. So for the sake of getting through this a little bit quicker, I'll click zoom. So we can either zoom in or zoom out. In this case, we'll zoom in. I'll click off of it. Go back to the beginning. I'm just grabbing this playhead here and it's playing through it. So now this photo, I'll right click on it. 
And again, for the sake of quickness, we'll hit zoom again. Only this time, instead of zoom in, I'll zoom out. So as I play through it, it's zooming out. This one here, let's maybe pan. And again, you can either pan to the left, pan to the right. Um, and it says resize to fit canvas. So the only thing you just want to be careful about is that you're not cutting off your text when you're putting in this move. So we'll, we're panning this direction. In this particular photo here, I'm going to rotate and zoom. And again, clockwise, counterclockwise, whichever I want to do. Doesn't really matter. I'll zoom in. So it looks like that. In my fifth video, I'll right click and we'll zoom in. And then finally, in the last one, I'll zoom out. Got zoom, there we go, zoom out. So we're almost done. And this isn't a video, this is just some still images on the line. And you can see right over here in your layers, they're all there. So if you want to kind of save this project, you would save it as a PSD or Photoshop file. And then if you need to go back in and make changes and rearrange or whatever, you won't have to bring in all the photos again. Uh, the only other thing you could do at this point, if you want to, is you can add dissolves or other things in there. You would click over here. And let's say, for example, you put in crossfade. So I'm going to grab this, hold down the left mouse button, and drag it in between picture one and two. And then this way, when you play it through, it'll dissolve. The only problem is, is as you can see, it's starting to make the video a little bit shorter. And it won't be 30 seconds anymore, so that's kind of up to you. You have other options at the end. If you want to, you could fade with black and put it on the last picture. So when you get down here, it would fade to black. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and undo those two to get us back where we were. So um, we have in our motion in all the pictures. So you can see also now here, it says audio track. So we want to add an audio track to it, add audio. And I've given the class a bunch of 30 second cuts. So we'll click on it and open. And it'll drop the audio track there. It's a little bit shorter than 30 seconds, but now when you play it back, it'll play with the audio. So our project's pretty much all done. All we have to do now is turn this into a video. So we're gonna go up to File, and we're gonna go to, instead of Save, we're gonna go to Export, and we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom where it says Render Video. And we're gonna go in here, and we're gonna name our project, and we're gonna call this Still Image. And it's asking us underneath to select the folder. So I'll click on this and I'll go ahead to my desktop and I'll go to photos where it was. I'll put it in the same folder and choose it. Uh, for the format, you want it to say H.264. You have H.264, you have QuickTime and DPX. You could probably do QuickTime, but H.264 is typically what it will default to. High quality. And the document size is 1920 by 1080. Once you do that, you don't need to do anything else. You hit render. And then after this exporting video goes away, then you would just go to the folder in which you saved it and double check it, make sure it's all good to go. And then you could upload it or put it wherever you need to be. This is a, a good way to do a picture montage, not only necessarily for my class, but if you're doing a... Um, a bunch of pictures maybe for some your parents wedding or something like that it's it's a good way to do this and it's a little known feature that most people don't know about photoshop 
Uh, make sure all your photos are sized exactly the same way. When you bring in your first photo onto the timeline here, it's going to uh, make that whole timeline the size of your first photo. So if your first photo is 1920 by 1080, but your second is, it's gonna try and compensate by either making it smaller or bigger. A lot of the students don't edit the photos to 1920 by 1080, and they just take it out of the camera, and once they put it on the timeline, you could see black on the sides of the screen. So I hope this helps and you can do your project in class a little bit better now that you've revisited this for a second time.